Ten year study has linked levels of plastic chemicals in pregnant mothers to autism in boys. The Flory Institute found evidence of higher levels of BPA in mothers who gave birth to sons who were later diagnosed with autism. Well, Professor Anne Louise Ponsonby joins us now from Melbourne um, and has been involved in this research. Um, take us back to basics then. What, was the, what were you originally looking at? Right. Well, we, we uh, several past studies have shown a link between higher plastic exposure in pregnancy and uh, abnormal child neurodevelopment, including um, or, uh, or different child neurodevelopment, including autism. We wanted to go beyond correlation to uh, understand this more deeply. Uh, and so we conducted a program of research over 10 years, including two birth cohorts, one here in Australia, the Barwon infant study and one in uh, New York, Columbus Centre study, and then over 25 uh, laboratory studies to consistently get a picture on what was happening with the link between these two in terms of underlying mechanisms. And uh, we have now uh, published that. So we find that this link between higher BPA exposure um, in the womb and um, the risk of male autism is through suppression of aromatase, a key steroid enzyme in brain development, particularly for males. OK, again, take that back to basics for me. So it, it is affecting um, a child's DNA and their uh, what's happening in their brain yeah. whilst they're yeah. in the womb. Yes, yes. So in both the cohort studies, higher levels of BPA were associated with switching down that aromatase gene that's very important um, for controlling male brain development in particular, less so for females. So that was in the cohorts. Mm. Then in the, the lab studies, we had a whole lot of other mechanistic data, cell cultures, electrical activity. The important thing is my colleague, Associate Professor Boone, found a target compound that once we had identified the mechanism could then negate some of these effects of BPA and in fact minimise some of the features of autism across different types of, of models in the lab. Wow, that is, I mean, that's a, a huge development in itself, two big developments. Um, P people who may be pregnant will be worried watching this and, and at, at your research. So what is it that's in um, a mother's stomach that is causing the damage? Yes, well, you know, unfortunately, we find plastic avoidance at the individual level is quite difficult to achieve. Um, so many studies have shown that. So it's really a job for government regulators. But currently, BPA is in some food contact plastic materials. It's in lining of cans. Um, and it's in epoxy lining on various different products. Even though BPA has become less common, it, other bisphenols have come in like BPF and S. They're very similar in structure. And um, I think we have to consider that, that they may have some health issues as well and should be evaluated for that. Other, and the other thing in our work is this aromatase site is a site that we know that other chemicals like flame retardants can operate. So now we're concerned about chemical mixtures. Sorry <laughs> for the difficult news, but we can only move forward. We're worried about chemical mixtures acting together. BPA is just the oldest and the easiest one to start with to study, but, um, but we're not saying that's the only one that needs consideration here. It's not our job to consider, it's safety regulators for governments, and already the findings of this paper have gone towards EU regulation systems. Um, so it's good to know that the findings are feeding back into that loop. Yeah, I mean, very important research. Um, do you envisage, you say that, that there has been some changes, that it, that it will change what advice there is given to prospective parents, what advice there might be afterwards? As you say, you're talking about reducing the effects of some autism. Yeah, I, I think that the, the, the regulatory bodies that are responsible for giving advice about um, exposures during pregnancy or process levels in food, they themselves will consider and bring it into their recommendations. More generally, things don't usually change just on one study, but certainly this study will contribute to that machinery of advice and recommendations. With the treatment, we're, we're yet to evaluate it in humans, so we haven't even established the safety in humans. Uh, yet alone the efficacy, that'll be work that Flory is continuing to do, hopefully eventually developing human trials. But 
it, you know, now that um, Associate Boone, uh, Professor Boone and co have identified this compound, it, it really starts to give us some, some better ideas towards future autism treatment for subgroups of children with autism that, that, that it might be warranted for um, and also for prevention. Professor Anne-Louise Ponsonby, thank you so much. Thank you.